so again what we're doing here is uh, in this lecture is covering how to have multiple forms inside of a project and so I've got this multi-form project and I'm going to set it as the startup project and we got form one let me share my screen my projector is that bad um, let's share the screen and we've got form one dot cs and let's just go ahead and add and if you look under add you could see that form is kind of a quick menu item <clears throat> or you could just go to add new item and of course select form under the selection uh, here and we got form 2 so we got form 1 and form 2 let's just create a form 2 and so two different forms obviously you can give them names <clears throat> other than form 1 and form 2 and that would make sense let's uh let's just keep them name form 1 and form 2 cuz that's simple enough let's go ahead and create a button and I guess the first thing to mention is that there are multiple ways of doing this so what I'm gonna do is what I think is kind of the easiest solution um, the solution that I've used in the past but when it comes to working with forms um, there there are many ways of doing this and so my answer doesn't have to be your answer but it is <clears throat> it is a potential solution and so we have a button that says show form 2 button show form 2 okay and so now that we have been working with classes and objects for a while you can kind of see that form 1 is a partial it, it is a it is a class form 2 if I kind of click over here on form 2 and I go to view code we see that form 2 is a class well what do we know about classes how do you create objects uh, once we know the name of the class we can instantiate an object of that class so let's go into the form 1 code here's my button click and let's just start typing form 2 okay well that's that's a name of a class called second form equals new form two and so this syntax for creating the second form is pretty much what you might expect now doesn't do anything clicking the button um, and because that is because we have to basically say how to show that form and there's a method an instance method if you will called show dialog and what show dialog is going to do is pop up that second form in like a modal uh, type view and so what is a modal a modal is kind of this idea of it pops up the second form over the top of the first form and you can't interact with the first form until you're done with the second form okay so so show dialog pops up this second form in a in a modal view okay and this is one of the the ways of uh, again of doing this um, pretty pretty straightforward create an instance of the object and then call show dialog now <clears throat> how do you send data how do you send data from point to point well, what do you know about line 12? Line 12 declares a variable called second form and initializes it to a new form, calling the form to constructor. So what I'm highlighting right here is a constructor call. If I go into the form to code, here's my constructor. My constructor takes no data it is a default constructor with no parameters hmm 
hmm, could I overload that? Could I overload that constructor so that we can send some data from point A to point B? Yeah, let's do that, right? So maybe I have a class called student and student ID and student name, good enough. Our students have names. Let's go to our form one and let's create a student object using an object initializer, right? Student S1 is new student. And let's pass in an ID of one comma name of Evan. Okay, so, so we've got some data stored in an object and we want to send that object over to the second form because we're in form one now. We want to send that data to form two and maybe display that data. Maybe we can even put in a two string to display public override to string <coughs> and return the student has an ID of and we'll say instead of saying the student we'll just say Billy has an ID of ID okay so there's our two string Let's go to form two and let's make a constructor that takes a student. And okay. Well, what do we also have in classes? Well, our classes also have instance fields. So let's make a private student We'll just call, just for the, the sake of this, we'll call it underscore S1. It's an instance field called S1. And under, in our constructor, we'll set S1 equal to student. So now our form two is gonna initialize a student object to the student object that's passed into the constructor. <clears throat> well, let's go into form two and let's view code. Um, maybe, maybe in the constructor, um, we can just go ahead and put in a label so that when this form loads, We just display the data when the form loads. So this is LDL result. <clears throat> and I will set label result dot text equal to student dot to string. Bada bing, bada boom. And now here I need to pass that if I kind of go back to my constructor call. I've got the default constructor of form two, and I've got the form two that accepts my <coughs> student object. My student object identifier over here is S1. I'll go ahead and send S1 over to form two. At this point, I don't even really need the instance field. I'm not doing anything with it, but you know, if you wanted to use this student object in another method, you could you could do that if you had this instance field. But there we go. So now, essentially what we're doing, we click on show form two and okay, good. So here's the mistake that I'm making. Um, it's saying that my object is not set to an instance of an object. Um, basically, S1 is never initialized to a new student. And so if I, if I show that error again, uh, just so you can kind of... <clears throat> uh, it's actually barking at me that student. Now, 
student. It does have the ID in Evan. Um, so let me view this a little bit more. Null reference object not set to an instance of an object. Let me troubleshoot this. Oops, cancel. Um, it might not be happy because my, I'm not sure if it's my, it's not, I don't think it's my student that's a problem. I think it's actually my label. Um, I think it's actually my label that it's not happy with. So what I'm going to do is stop this and I'm going to make an event handle. I'm going to double click the form. I'm going to put form to load. I'm going to put an event handler for my load event. And instead of putting this here, I'm going to put this in my form to load. And now, because now I actually do need my underscore S1 to string. And at that point, it should recognize the label. I think basically the, the label uh, wasn't loaded into memory yet. Um, because the form hadn't loaded. So now, let's see if I'm getting the same error. Okay, now we're cooking. Uh, my data is not showing up. So let's, we're at least not getting that error. So now let's put a breakpoint in right here. Multi format. Click the button. And I could see that. Um, I need a different event. So we're very close, but it's not running my load event. Let me look at the form to events. Let me go to properties and events. Could do it on a button click but I wouldn't do it on form load I would have thought when the constructor is called and then the form 2 is loaded I would have thought that was the right event clearly it's not um, to just to just put this into a button click properties label result Let's put this line of code in my button click and make sure it is just a form loading thing. Wait a minute. Something's funny. Okay, so did a little troubleshooting and I did it when I was paused. So let's bring everyone back up to speed and uh, just, I was just making one small mistake and I found it and fixed it, okay? Um, let me kind of close everything and so we can make this nice and clean. Close all tabs. So form one, and we got a button that says show form two. So if I view the code of form one, uh, we create a student object, give it some data, create an instance of form two and call the constructor that sends that student over and then we show dialogue. If I go into form two, here's the mistake that I was making. I really don't need this button. Uh, all I have is a label. Um, if I go into this code, this is the constructor that I made. And what I, for, what I was forgetting to do is you notice on the default constructor, it was calling this method called initialize component. And that's what I was forgetting to do in my constructor. Initialize component, um, will run a lot of the code that is generated for you by Visual Studio to initialize all of your controls. That's why I was having some issues with my labels and my buttons weren't showing up, like none of my controls were showing up on my second form because I was not calling initialize component. So once I added initialize component, um, and then I assigned my instance field and then I put the label result.txt2 string. Notice I can delete this button click, I'm not using it anymore. <clears throat> now when I run it, 
uh, click on show form two, and then there you can see Evan has an ID of one, and that's being done on form load. I should even be able to bring this back. And now that I initialize my label, again, my label was saying it's not set to an instance of an object because I wasn't running the code that was creating the new label object, right? So now that I have a label, I should be able to say label results.txt equals student.toString. And that line of code should, should work. And I don't need an extra, there we go. Right, so that was my mistake the whole time. And simple solution um, for passing data from one form to another. And normally that is kind of what you want when you have multiple windows. You just want to give the user a like a, a modal pop-up, let them interact with that pop-up, and then close it down. If that's not what you want, um, you know, of course, we can look at other options as well. But um, do we have any questions on sending data from one form to another? The big thing there is overload a constructor. Don't forget, like I did, to call the initialize component. If you want to work with that data on multiple methods, just like we've been doing all semester long, you need a class level variable. In this case, it's an instance field. And you can assign that variable equal to the value that's passed in. But really, we don't even need S1 at this point. I'm not using this student object in any other method. So S1 really didn't do much for me. Okay. I'll stop the recording there and let you guys get to the work on labs.